Hey Booktube, um, today we are starting a journey down the road of kings. Now we're going to be doing um, Conan on Saturdays <clears throat> and the Cthulhu Mythos on Sundays. So um, this will be a lot of fun for me. So hopefully it's fun for you. And um, we're going to be going through the Conan tales um, that were released in the pulps in the order in which I believe they should be read to follow uh, chronology. And um, after we do that, um, we might go into the um, Conan tales that um, were not released in the pulps that were released later um, and uh, uh, later after Howard's death um, and then we might go into um, Conan tales that were not by Robert E. Howard um, I have a very hard time deciding um, which of those things are worth reading and which aren't. Um, also, the ones I'm going to be going over are going to be as close to the Robert E. Howard originals as we can have. Um, so, all of the Lancer and Ace um, paperback copies that were edited um, and basically uh, for a big majority of them rewritten by L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter. Um, we're not going to be really dealing with those here. So um, let me know down below what your thoughts are on that. Um, I know that's been a uh, topic of conversation on this channel before. It's like one of those things where if L. Sprague de Camp didn't do what he did, would anyone know who Conan is today? You know, we, we don't know. Um, so anyhow, um, the first story um, by Howard, I don't know if you guys can hear it, They're, we're having a windstorm right now. And um, I've been waiting for about five hours to do this video. And every time I think the wind has died down, um, I sit down to do this and it picks up. So I'm going to be putting some noise reduction for background noise. So hopefully you won't even notice it. Chronologically speaking from um, Conan's life in the Howard verse. Um, the first story we're going to be talking about is The Frost Giant's Daughter, um, which was, it's only 3,000 words. Um, it was sent to Farnsworth Wright at Weird Tales um, in a pack that had um, Phoenix on the Sword, which was a rework of a Cole of Atlantis story called um, By This Axe I Rule. And um, I believe it was the Scarlet Citadel. It might have been Scarlet Citadel or the Tower of the Elephant, the other one that went with it. But um, Farnsworth Wright took um, the other two stories and rejected the Frost Giant's Daughter. Um, Howard then rewrote, um, the character, and, um, instead of it being Conan, it was, um, Amir, um, Amra, 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 um, is what he changed the character's name to, and, um, changed the, um, story from the Frost Giant's Daughter to Gods of the North. Now, what's weird about this is some copies that are floating around of Gods of the North um, have it 
written as Conan um, and have taken out parts of the um, Amra stuff and put it more in the Conan universe. Um, and to be honest, like, it was probably in the same world. Um, but the big thing, um, and, and we'll just talk about this now, um, but the big thing between Cole and Conan is that um, Cole was the king of Atlantis, and um, he wrote some Cole stories. Some of them got picked up, some of them didn't. Um, and instead of being a fantasy writer that talks about other worlds and other places and all this stuff, Robert E. Howard wanted to, um, he was a big fan of history and he wanted to ground, um, his stories on earth and just at late earlier times or whatever. And, um, Cole was just too far removed from what most people would be able to relate to. So then he started writing Solomon Cain stories. And Solomon Cain, for those of you who don't know, was a uh, Puritan um, lunatic. I don't know another way. He was a very religious man, but um, completely off his rocker. And those stories, I think, were a little too close to modern time to have it be considered fantasy. Um, it's much more supernatural than um, anything else because of how close it is. So Conan kind of fits in the middle. Um, it's far enough back um, to not seem realistic like Solomon Cain, but um, recent enough to where Atlantis has been sunk and destroyed. <laughs> and um, the parts of um, the world that Conan is traversing is basically a primal Europe, Middle East um, area. So anyway, um, with all that being said, so the Frost Giant's daughter, um, we have Conan, who has basically just left Samaria. Um, he's base, I would say probably like 18, like he's a, a young man. And he has gone north um, to fight in the war between the Asir and the Veneer. Now, this is taken right out of, um, like, Norse mythology. Um, so, some people reading this would, like, be like, oh, I know where this is, and I know who these people are, and stuff like that. So anyway, um, it opens with this big-ass battle in the snow, and there's just bodies strewn everywhere. And Conan gets, um, he's getting his ass kicked, but he's killing everybody. So, like, it's a win-win. And um, he gets whacked in the head, and if he didn't have his helmet on, like, he would have been dead. Um, but he ends up defeating this last veneer because Conan's fighting on the side of the Asir. Um, and he's basically bloody and beaten. He's probably horribly concussed at this moment. <clears throat> and this is when the story gets weird. Um, he looks up and there's this hot naked chick in the snow um, and she starts talking to him and he sees that it's some hot naked chick um, wearing like a see-through gossamer veil um, 
but he's like, hey, I didn't know there was any, like, villages out here. Like, I'm completely fucked. Can you please take me to your village and um, kind of heal me up a little bit? <clears throat> he's not coming on to her, okay? Um, and the reason why I say that is because this story um, has really divided fans and as we are talking more about it right now, you will see why, and then you will hear what my opinion of this is. Um, she starts goading him, like, going, Oh, you big wuss, like, I can't believe you got your butt kicked by all these dudes, and now you're crying about it, and da 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 And he thought she was one of the veneer, because her hair was red, but then all of a sudden, she's like, No, um, I'm, I didn't say that, and so now her hair is blonde, and, um, she's like, Come and get me, bitch, like, whatever to him. So he starts chasing her, um, because now he's pissed off and, um, he can't think of anything else other than chasing this chick. And so they're running like straight into the middle of nowhere and they turn this corner and he's like running like crazy is like temples are exploding with just like the exhaustion but his blood's pumping and um she's just like like gliding like a gazelle so they turn this corner or whatever and she's like there my brothers get him and rip his heart out so we could um serve it to our father and um these giant dudes these ice giants come up out and, um, Conan's like, oh, it's a trap. It's a trap. Um, but shockingly, he fucking kills the ice giants. He got whacked really hard by one of them, and, like, half of his body was numb. But, um, and he's like, you know, you're gonna have to, and the chick is, like, freaking out now. And he's like, you're going to have to get, like, your whole family and have them come out here and try to kill me. And he's just, like, enraged and he's, like, going after her and he grabs her and holds her close and kisses her and all this stuff. And she wiggles free and she's like, Ymir, help me, you're like, father. And, like, he's going to go get her again and the skies open up and crack and and she, like, goes up in, like, a flame and, like, disappears so the next thing he knows, he's waking up, and some of his Asir brethren um, are like, dude, are you okay? Like, what's going on? Why'd you come all the way out here? And um, they're like, we followed your footprints, you know? And he's like, well, I was chasing this girl. And they're like, no, there was only one set of footprints. And he's like, oh, it was the daughter of Ymir, and she tricked me, and all this other stuff. And then this one old dude's like, yeah, he's not lying. Like, um, she comes to battlefield and lures men out of battle to be sacrifices for her father. And, um, everyone's like, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And then they're like, Oh wait, look at his hand. And he like lifts it up and he has the gossamer veil in his hand. And everyone's like, Oh, <gasps> okay. So that's the frost giant's daughter. Now, the reason why this story causes a lot of shit between the fan base is because some people say Conan's a piece of crap and he was going to rap her. I say rap so I don't get in trouble with YouTube, but um, I'm using the word rap and I'm going to end it with an E. Um, so if you know any grammar, you would be able to figure that out. Um, I could also say uh, ape, like a gorilla, but with an R at the beginning. So you guys know what I'm talking about. So he was gonna rap her. And, um, he's a piece of crap and blah, blah, blah. And then some people are like, that's stupid. Why are you holding him to like societal rules of today he's a barbarian and a barbaric time and he was just going after a chick and i don't even follow that logic the 
last thing I think is that she wanted this reaction out of him. She seduced him. She enchanted him. He even says, he's like, I don't know what I was doing. I saw this girl and then the only thing I could think of was getting her. So she's obviously magic. She's the daughter of a god, a demigod, whatever you want to call it. The other thing is she showed up naked. She could obviously change her shape. She changed her hair color. She went up in a flame to be with Ymir. Um, she could have been a giant, like another ice giant. Like the ice giants could have just shown up at the battlefield and picked the pieces up, you know? Like all of these things was like a game that she plays. Um, she might not even be a she. She could be, like, Bob or something like that, okay? Um, so she wanted to make him so hungry for her that he would chase her into the northern wastes where her brothers could come up and kill him. And it's a big game. It's a big joke. Um, but never before had someone killed her brothers during this ordeal. And, um, she was a bit shocked and had to call for her daddy. Now, another thing that's weird here, so Conan was gonna rap the daughter. Oh, man, I said that word. Rap the daughter. And he killed the two sons. And Ymir comes and doesn't do nothing to Conan. He just takes his kid and splits. Um... I have a bigger problem with that than anything else in the story. As a father, um, the world would have ended at that point. Like, it would have been like the earth opens up into a ball of flames. But anyway, um, yeah, so this is her M.O. And um, now some of you are going, oh, you're saying she deserved it. Da, 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 da not saying that. I'm saying she enchanted him with some kind of divine spell to make him chase her through the snow into an inhospitable place while he was almost dead to begin with. So, and again, the first thing he says to her is like, can you help me? Take me someplace? Take me to your village? His first thought wasn't, I'm going to hit you over the head with a stick and then do what I want with you. So anyway, <clears throat> let me know down below what you think of this story. It's a really good story. It's very um, fast-paced. It's short. Um, it paints a wonderful picture. You feel um, cold as you read it. Like, it is chitty. Um and it has a lot of... Oh, I didn't even say. I, I was talking about it earlier. But, so, um, Farnsworth Wright rejected this story. And so he rewrote it a little bit. Called it Gods of the North. And then had it published um, in Fantasy Fan. But I think he was already dead by the time it was published in Fantasy Fan. Um, which was 34... But I can't remember when he killed himself. So anyway, um, so that's that. But um, yeah, let me know down below what you think of this story, what stories you're looking forward to, and um, we will get cracking. So see you later.